So how much is your time worth at your current valuation or what you feel that is fair? Then from there, you can easily build up like yeah. how much is this? Okay, this is a three-hour job. This is how much, right? So, but when you go to a company, you also must realize that it is a discount because at the end of the day, you are taking your whole day. Mm-hmm. So you might have other opportunities that might come up, mm-hmm. but you know, I've and said- secure, yeah. 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 And the security, yeah. yeah. Welcome back to Yamcha Sessions VFO Very Fast One. Today is the 9th. Uh. Is it today's 9th? 9th. 9th of March, 2024. What, time? <laughs> <laughs> what will we be discussing today, MJ? Please. So we're going to teach you how to make more money. <laughs> uh, okay. more, I think more importantly is to increase your, your income. Okay. 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 Oh, Bro- sorry. Speaking. Before we begin introducing Justin Raymond to the podcast oh, for the very first time. Yes. Oh, Hello. Say hi, Justin. Oh, that one? That one, it yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. Nick is in charge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so you were saying, gonna learn, teach us how to make money. Let's go. Yes, so we will start with you, mm. uh, John. You know, someone listening to this might say, like, my income's not high enough. Okay. What's your immediate response? Wow. You're gonna ask me why you don't earn enough money here. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, he's saying, well, I, uh, I'm not earning enough. La. Mm. I sell chicken rice. <laughs> I I don't know how to respond to that way. I feel like I would, it, I think it depends on the age of the person. I think it depends on the, the yeah. his job as well. But I feel like in this current economy, you probably have to take up a side gig yeah. depending on your job. So if let's say I were to be in the creative industry, then perhaps you can do something like design. So Justin is a designer. You can do design on the side or if you can do, uh, I don't know, man, like, you know, voc- uh, vocal artists as well. Mm. So you can, do on go on Fiverr if you need an extra buck. Worst case, you just do it. baking cakes and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. During MC, a lot of people also bake cakes to earn some some cash on the side. You know, that's the I f- I suppose the first skill. The second skill is if you invest your time into a specific ability, then you could always scale that amount, lah. So if let's say if I decide to learn how to do video editing, no video editing experience, just stitch together a few clips, put in some music transitions, put a title, then you can scale then. Uh, you can video power right. level one, power level two. Yeah, right, right, I right. I just have one follow up. I, I guess, what if someone says, you know, like video editing, mm. or, you know, it's not really my thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or if it's not creative, let la. You need, yeah, you yeah, you can say. Yeah. Mm, maybe you should ask around what, how you can help law. Mm-hmm. Like immediately, I would think of that. It, I would leverage on my the people I know. That's how I would do it. I would ask like, if you need help, then I could help in a different yeah. way and then learn yeah. a skill in that sense. Like for example, even if it's painting walls. So if you know someone that's in ID, then you can ask, hey, do you need additional help and I can help because I need to earn extra cash. I think if you're in this, especially nowadays, if you are very upfront with how you feel and your current situation, people are a lot more empathetic. They would help. Right. Justin, someone comes to you. <laughs> Long lost friend, maybe. Long lost friend. Stay lost. Not enough money la, to make uh, more. Well, there's two ways, I guess. I mean, one way is make more, right? So, <laughs> yeah, like, saying, like, whatever outlet, what like, whatever outlet you have, like, can your skills, it, it doesn't mean whatever you studied, right? Mm. So it could be like, maybe you could try something new, uh, watch YouTube, learn something. Uh, yeah. but, but the other part of it would be, Saving money as well. Yeah. So maybe you're not saving enough. Mm. Or there are ways you can look at your life. Yeah. Not just, so if you, you manage both, you will have a net yeah. know, increase. Don't so I mean, money. maybe to hone you a little bit, um, you're in the workforce how long now? 10 years. Too long. But <laughs> I don't know, at least 10. Uh, yeah. About 10 years. Yeah, about more, so more, how would you describe your journey of uh, increasing your income? I think it's off and on. Like it's, your, it's your drive, right? Okay. For me, it's like, okay, what do I need to get? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do I need in I my see. life, right? And then you kind of figure out like, so whatever comes along, you just try and do it. So like, what was that for you? What was that thing that helped you with your drive? A lot, I guess. <laughs> that, okay. a lot, okay. a lot, yeah, a lot of it is like the timing's right. Okay. And at the right time, you get offered like certain things or 
opportunities, right? Mm. And it's it's different, uh. So it's it's from time to time it just changes, and sometimes you just uh, work, right? Work towards it, and then it, I know it's very cliche, right? To so say oh work hard, lah. Uh. Like, <laughs> uh, what was the what was the industry that you're in that you got this luck? No, I mean when I was like freelancing and things like that. So sometimes you don't know when the next job is coming, right? People say go find, but it's not like you can just go outside and you can, you can. Yeah, yeah. You go shop to shop and you ask, ah, like, do you need yeah, my right. services, right? But it's not really that. Like, sometimes it's connections or people yeah. that you know. Then friend somehow. Friend. Eh? So for yours, it was mainly just connections? Mm, yeah, mostly. Uh, or yeah, yeah, pretty much. Right, mm. right. Big, what's your story? Hmm, I think John and Justin has covered lot of it yeah but i think it's just reassessing uh your expenditure first based mm, on what mm, you have true so yeah based yeah. on what you your income sort of uh your uh, lifestyle assess your yeah. lifestyle yeah. so i think safe to say maybe my recipe is that i don't think i have since i started working mm. i don't think my my expenditure has increased tremendously of course there are some liabilities like I bought a house, got a yeah. car and all this. But in terms of like just your raw lifestyle, lifestyle yep. I think it has decreased in fact. Yeah, <laughs> because right. 25 yeah. when when we came back from uh, from uni and uh, all, all that stuff, uh, I used to spend a lot on drinks, hang oh. out with friends and things like that. But then over time I start reducing, you know, start hanging out at the park, cheaper alternatives, find cheaper ways to do the same thing that you like yeah, to do. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't want to get to um your initial question was, I don't have enough money, right? I don't have enough money and yeah. like, I want to increase my income. Increase your income. I think, I think um, there's no better way than how Justin and John said it. Lah. You know, figure out your ways, speak to people, blah, 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 and all I that. I think it varies, mm. right? That's yeah, the thing. correct. It's like everyone has, mm. like what's enough? Yeah. Oh yeah, man, mm. that's a very, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So. But I, I, for me, <laughs> fundamentally, if for what you are getting every month, figure out what you are spending for yourself. Yeah. First. Or for your family law yeah. or whoever yeah. you're supporting. Right? Yeah, Actually, I think that's also a good uh, statement, like what is enough. So technically, yeah. if I'm not earning enough, mm -hmm. then I suppose, like you were saying, so going back to Justin, right? You have to set a goal. So the question is, what is enough? And then I can help you there, law. Yeah. Right? Because if you don't, if you don't, if you just give a generic statement, like I don't earn enough, how do I earn more? I think the follow-up question is, what is enough? I yeah. didn't even think about that. But that's <laughs> true. So <laughs> that's, yeah. sorry, sorry. But there's this other thing as well, right? Like, how much was he earning? How hard was he working? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Because he might be lazy. And <laughs> 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 yeah, by, yeah, you're not making it up for sure, but yeah, yeah. Or something. Yeah. So I think let, let's say in a Malaysian context, if you ask most people, they want to be T20, right? So as of the latest figures, uh, to be T20, you have to earn above 11 or 12,000 ringgit. I think it's 12.8 or something yeah, like that, yeah, total 13, household uh, income. Yeah, let's say let's say uh, 13. Um, let's say that, that's what you need if you want, say, one or two kids, mm. you know, two cars, right. a house, whatever, lah, okay? Um, what are your tips for earning that amount? Because it's it, it's a jump, right? If you, mm. it, and, and I know this because a lot of people, if you ask for five figures that we just magically, you know, employers find it more difficult to say yes. Mm. So we starting with Vic, right? What, what would be your tips to hit that threshold? And, and, and I mean, obviously you don't have to review, but if you're not there yet, like what, what's your, what's plan, your huh? game plan to do it? I think you must first need to know what the industry needs oh. and whether you have that or not in whatever space that you're working. Like I jumped three different industries so far. Mm. I was in construction first, loved it. Uh, but I had a projection of whether can I earn the five figure by the time I reach 30. And soon enough, I realized it's not no possible. Love, yeah. It's not possible unless you are a supplier somewhere mm -hmm. along different sides of the chain, mm -hmm. you, unless you like sell items or things like that. But I was more on the technical side. I see. Loved it, but I don't think I could have reached uh, the goal. five figures. Yeah. Then I realized um, I needed to brush up certain things. I like to look at things from macro perspective. Okay. Uh, so then I, I, I like to go and dig out things like, um, you know, in development, how do people allocate um, funds? Where, where do they spend in, on marketing? Uh, I always had this burning question. Why is it that engineers earn lesser than the salesperson who does nothing in the entire 
timeline of their project yeah. for three years. They do nothing. They sell one unit. They earn the same amount um, of the annual salary of the engineer. Wow, that's fucked up. One bro. unit or your residential cost. house. Yes, yes. Assuming it's a million ringgit project, right? Um, two, three percent. You get five figures. That's close to an annual salary yeah. of, the, of the engineer who worked on it for three years. Yeah, yeah. For example. And, and mm. arguably, I feel mm. the technical guy had to really like go through multiple rounds of. Bro, revision. you don't sleep. Look at you, Ren. Yeah, that's true. Mm. That's Sam said. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot more heavy on the operation side actually. Mm. Yeah, versus the sale. But if no sale there, then nobody sells. So, yeah, so we know hard. that to be a fact, right? But what? Why do you think that is the case? I think it's how Malaysia perceive. Um, um, the salesman. The the the, the talents lah. How they weigh people. I think mm. we are a country of just selling. I don't think we are producing. Uh, I don't think like say um, not too much on this, but like there are only certain sectors that we really thrive is because we innovate. Yeah. Like the microchip industry. Other than that, right? Everything else we just adopt and we sell. Mm. Like somebody else thrives in it. Oh, that's we, true. We huh? pick it up and then we sell. We, we import not, and we yeah, sell. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not like very creative um, yeah. from that point of view. Macro perspective actually is true. Yeah. We don't really produce anything, right? Mm. We have either raw ingredients to sell. Mm. We got right? commodities or, or import to sell. Mm. Or very rare in this case, the mm. microchip. Like say yeah. oil and gas in Malaysia, why is it better than say Nigeria? If I'm not mistaken, Nigeria produces more oil than Malaysia. Oh, wow. definitely. 100% yeah. more it's because they don't know how to refine their products. Raw oil comes in, uh, crude refine. oil comes in, and then you have to do some distillation, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then you produce like a hundred different products. Yeah. Malaysia is very good at it. Oh. Yeah. So we import um, crude people's oil. crude oil, we to make do. it in, make it into products and then we sell it back to them. What? Yeah. So so what Singapore yeah. does to us for water? La. <laughs> <laughs> we, we also import oil for our own. Right. Well, yeah, actually, we, we have the best type of crude oil in the world. It's called tapis crude. Mm. But we never use it for our own people so because it's, it's more valuable yeah. to sell it to mm. others than we use mm. the... That is a tragedy. <laughs> no, but actually, it's not because you get... Uh, so Petronas makes big bucks and the dividends of Petronas goes into the government, mm. which indirectly benefits you. So it's actually better to give away the, the best crude. But it's not like our country is in that <laughs> position to use that quality of- We don't have to lah. It's true lah. Yeah. You know like, it's like if you have a really big land and you you can say, I, I want the prime land or you can say, no, I'll take like the second or third prime and then I'll sell the rest and I just take the money. Oh, that's Which true. Because you, you don't really need the prime land you don't anyway. You need the prime land, right? Mm. This is a fair argument. Yeah. So yeah, so we, I mean, just to summarize your point, we are a country that sells more than we produce. Mm. Therefore, with the weightage. Yeah, yeah. The weightage is on but sales. Before I lose my train of thought, yeah. to yeah. your question, right? How do you get there? Then after that, I went to consulting. Consulting is a lot of just um, hitting the walls, learning. Uh. Just got to suck up your ego and start <laughs> learning. Uh. So eventually, I mean to- So get, learning what uh, precisely? Um, so in consulting, you go into different industries, uh, but I majored in technology. Like oh. I had no clue about technology whatsoever. Like I didn't know about software development or implementation and mm. things like that. So- over there, I learned quite a bit from like the infra side all the way till like the user side where you get like mobile applications or I web see. applications and things like that. More, more to B2B side, um, enterprise solutions. Um, then, then I realized, okay, now I have construction, I have project management, I have software development skills. Based on consultant. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, where do experience. I go after that? So then I found this opportunity in in my friend's company and I started a company with him oh. uh, in healthcare technology because he specializes in healthcare and I am a bit more on the uh, technology side. I see. So I guess you just have to learn along the, there's no recipe bro. Yeah. Like who would have, I would not have guessed uh, where I am today like 10 in years ago. In high school. Yeah, so no chance. Yeah. No chance. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Justin? Let me reiterate the question just in case. Yeah, mm. uh, how to become T20. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking because it's so many different people with different skills and um, you really have to look at what you can do, mm. what you can sell, right? I mean, selling yourself like, in the sense, not prostitution. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, hey, but if so you're good, good at it, right? That's, they are that's more, more than, yeah. Focus on, okay, but, anyways. Um, <laughs> And then figure out whether it's a volume thing 
you have to do or specialization, I guess. Because mm. once you know your skills, then you can't go like, okay, how much money can I make for it? If it's just like five ringgit per day, then it's like, I need to do a lot of the same thing Scaling to get la. that amount. La. Or think of something else or another skill. Whereas if you know, mm. hey, wait, wait, wait. Maybe if I specialize or I'd be really good in this skill, you will get there. So I, I guess it's a... And also it's opportunities. Uh, it's like suddenly somebody gives you a project. Mm. Then you're like, okay. Yeah, I mean, instant thing. Uh, but that's what everyone hopes for, right? Like the lottery or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. well, yeah. I think overall it's just that. Uh, it's, there's no surefire way, right? There's no book that says... I mean, there's a lot of books. But, uh, <laughs> but no for you. Yeah, because it's yeah. all... Like you, you are so different. Like yeah. that small change can mean like your trajectory is totally different, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Or maybe on the way to work, you fall down and it's like, <sighs> yeah. don't fall down now, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so my takeaway is whatever you do, don't fall down. Yeah, don't fall down. <laughs> don't fall down. <laughs> you got to find your niche also. <laughs> Get back yeah. up. Yeah. You know, yeah. Thing, yeah. Th- yeah. It's quite similar for me, actually, for both Vic yeah. and Justin. Because I would say the same with Vic. Like, I don't think I would recognize... What I, wa- what I would have yeah. wanted to do back yeah. when I was younger. But at the same time, I also, I think you kind of need to find a specific part of yourself that is a skill. So I know this sounds a bit weird, right? But everybody is born with a specific type of like talent. personality, talent, you know, that type of thing. So if, for example, I believe that my ability is to be able to tell stories concisely so that people understand. I don't use difficult language. I don't use difficult words. I go direct to the point. So now I think the next step for me is after I've identified what I am good at, how can I apply this into the world? So uh, my mentor, Wing Kiong, has said this to me before in private and in also on the podcast. He said that I think once you know what you're good at because you're born with that personality trait, you don't need to fight so hard. It's like you don't need to yeah. fight a river, you know, yeah, upstream. Yeah. You go with the, with the flow Downstream, already. Yeah. yeah. And he says that and once you've identified this, you can actually apply this to multiple industries. So for example, if I was in architecture, possibly I'm the person that presents the overall idea. Because yeah. I speak well, I get to the point, I'm very concise. And if I go to events, which I am in now, I know how to apply this to my proposals and stuff. And I, it, this can be applied anywhere. So maybe I'm technically like the story man, salesman person that kind of sells the, the product. Lah. But a lot of people forget to ask this question because they always ask themselves how to earn the money first. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, you want to earn that money now, but you're not thinking how you could have earned a lot more without even trying so hard. You can just yeah. be yourself and earn the amount of money as well, you know. I think but, it's also, yeah. also, also acceptance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like some people, they're good at something, but I don't want to be that. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. You're fighting, uh-huh. yeah. You're wasting it like, in some way, right? Because the thing is there and you, it's you. Yeah. But you choose not to do it. But actually, I feel as time goes by, and Andrew is the same. When he was much younger, he wanted to do public relations and that's because he didn't know what to do. Mm. But when he went into it, he realized that he's a person that A, wants to earn a lot of money and B, he likes tech. Mm-hmm. So I think after that, when he went, when the social media boom ended, it was the e-commerce boom, right? So he thought, oh, okay, la, I must just go into tech, right? Everything is tech anyway. Then he just kind of found his way. But I tell you, if you go back to 16, 17 years old, Andrew, he probably told you, I just want to sleep. Maybe 25, Andrew also wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tra- Trajectory-wise, yeah. but if you know your skill set and you know what you like, then it's quite easy already. Somehow life kind of ge- leads you in that direction, I feel. And you know, I, I think just building on what you say, I think it's knowing like what is downstream to you. So <laughs> it's natural. But then find, equally important is just finding the, the people that need, yeah. that you can offer. Yeah. I, yeah, I think the more you help people, right? Like five five figures is not a question of if, but a question of when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's something people don't understand because like you said, they, they come in with the mindset of, I want to earn the five figure. It's a bit, and so like, people can tell when you're in it for the money and straight away people's like walls yes, yes. up. Yeah. Right, if the language is you always talking about price and you always saying, oh, I want to do that. I don't want to do this. Versus you saying, oh, I'm, I'm here to help. I think, uh, you know, first of all, I listen to what you have to say. And then after that, I think these are some areas that can really, you know, develop you, that can help you. And then once you can show that value, then people are like, yeah, I mean, what's... But there's nothing wrong with wanting to earn money. I think it's just the, if you're truth, true to it also, right? I think you can just boil it down to, actually, I just want a lot of money, but I'll do whatever it takes. So yeah. if you're willing to learn, you're willing to be in that acceptance phase also. Then you understand that maybe that person's yeah. main goal was not for him to earn money, but to find help. So if you manage to help him, maybe he indirectly helps you with money yeah. too. That type of thing. And, and just stop, just want to touch on 
Vic's discussion on technical and salespeople. Often technical people will feel that their job is more important, right? Because they feel like, well, if I, mm. there's no technical guy to, to do fix, it. to manage the thing, right? There will be no product, which is true. But the way the market works is not based on how difficult your job is or how technical your job is or how hard you work at your job. What is more important is which skill is rarer. Oh yeah. Huh? Right, it's the same reason why a doctor saves lives, but virtually no doctor on planet Earth is richer than LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yep. You know? But, what the fuck? So why uh, it's so valuable for <laughs> sales guys is because you can build the product. You can know the ins and outs. You can make sure that the uptime is always close to 100%. Mm -hmm. But if you can never exchange it for someone's money in their pocket, then it's just a product. Sit it's just inventory, right? It's mm. just there. Absolutely. So where the sales guy come in is, yeah, you might think that, oh, he's just a talker and all that, but okay. he got the thing over the line. Yeah. yeah. And you as the technical guy mm -hmm. did not get it over the line. Mm -hmm. So if you feel as a technical guy that you're so important, and all that, okay, fine, then, then step out of that shoe, of your shoes, of, of your bubble mm. and say, okay, now get this product over the line, go talk to that guy. And let's say you're selling medical equipment, Sell it to a, go to a doctor, go to hospitals and clinics. Or try sell it. It's so difficult. Yeah, it's so I, difficult. But I completely agree. Yeah. I think if if you have that view of a technical guy being um, better, yeah. I think just do just follow what Elon Musk did. La. He did Bro. just create. He went and sold. And, and, yeah. and so just to be on that as well, mm. if the technical guy came back mm. to me, and I think this is a very important discussion because. Most technical guys, honestly, they work harder than salespeople. Yeah. They are probably smarter than salespeople. And so I think a lot of people like that feel like they should be earning more than these salespeople. But just, they may say, look, if I disappear, no one's going to handle your technical part. To which I say, yes, correct. But I would gather, right, that I can find a replacement for you faster than a very good than a very good salesperson. Mm. It's easier to find a good technical guy because in a way, a technical person can be, like it can be learned. Yeah. You know, because it's, you just take an apprentice and then show him how to do yeah. it. And then mm. eventually he could find a way to. There's a clear path, but it's hard to replace a salesperson. It's kind of like, and I know this is segue and you don't like anime, but I just want to segue a little bit, right? You know how in Dragon Ball they get to see the power scale? Hey, he died. Yeah, he died. <laughs> yeah, we want to talk about it. Okay, anyways. Yeah. So anyway, you know right. how you can see certain power scales or so like this fighter is 1,000, yeah. this fighter is 1,200. So it's very easy to distinguish who is stronger, correct, right? Correct, correct. But the technically, right, the salesperson, right, can, you can't see the power one. You can see the technical guy's power, but you can't see the sales guy's technical power. Yeah, 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 would, so yeah. people will yeah. automatically feel like, I'm better. I can see the power level. My knowledge is at like that number, right? But this guy has no, like the number is insignificant to me. He probably doesn't know anything and he's he's comparing it to a different skill set altogether. The sales guy is what actually manages to show what the power can be done, you know, that type of thing. You're right, you're right. Yeah. And, and, and that's why one of the big realizations for a lot of people, especially if you're Asian, is that um, uh, hard work does not equal income. Mm -hmm. mm. And I would, get people to realize that you should not adopt the, the Chinese way of looking at hard work, which is hard work equals success. You should adopt the Japanese uh, conception of hard work, which is that the hard, work, hard, hard work equals hard work. That you should be you oh. should be working because you, you have pride in your work. That's oh. why I, I, was, I always remember this story in um, Japan where there's a shrine in Japan. You may know this, but there's a shrine in Japan, right? Outside, there's uh, someone selling mochi. This this old auntie selling mochi and she has not changed the price for, for 10 years, but she's always there working hard. She's always there doing a good job. I, you, I mean, I find a video I show you. Okay. okay. Of course, I'm not saying don't, don't charge your mochis higher, right? That's <laughs> not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that that should be how hard work should be viewed. Not, or if, if I work hard, but I don't get the commensurate pay, I don't want to do. Mm. That's what I feel. Uh. Wow, that's, that's also like so difficult because culture is. is so different. I think the Japanese culture is so different. Yeah, but consider this. We re whose work do we respect? The Chinese or the Japanese? More? Oh, she. Just think about it. Yeah. One, one creates something to sell. One, one creates something to last. Mm. Very different. It's, yeah. it's like the honest 
chap fund man or like the kai fund man i would always go back to some uh, the the guy who serves you more at the same price that it was pre covid uh, always uh, yeah shit mm. makes sense right yeah actually but that's also going back to the question of whether you want to earn more or whether you want that honor lah you know what i mean because yeah, yeah. the hard work doesn't yeah. equate to the yeah, right. pride yeah. and refinement yes yeah. but that is yeah. the root that i'm trying trying yeah. to get at to yeah. Vic's point about technical versus sales. If yeah. technical guy, guy works hard, I agree. If the technical guy is complaining, mm-hmm. you work harder. Yeah. But it doesn't mean... And, and it's quite uh, sort of shattering to a lot of people because they grow up, you know, especially if, you, if you're the exam-oriented kind of person, right? You, you, you work hard, you plan, mm-hmm. you pass the exam and you feel like when you go into the workforce, you deserve this. You have arrived because you score at 4.0 yeah. GPA. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean... It's true. You have not lah, right? I did not get a four point one, fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's true though. A lot of people go yeah. through that hurdle, and then when they come out, then they then broken. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to ask a, a slightly different way, and starting with John, and I think it applies to to Vic as well. Let's say if the roles are reversed, right? And someone is asking you for a salary increase. Mm-hmm. Mm. How would I respond? So I'm the employer. Yeah. La. Actually, I just had this conversation. Yeah, they, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I feel that... So, right, the, I, I think we need to get to the, the root of why also. Mm-hmm. So I need to ask the person why. I think he needs to ask me why to justify also. La. Okay, uh, let's, then let, let's role play. So I am earning 6,000 ringgit, uh-huh. right? I'm in, let's say, uh, your specific company. Mm-hmm. I say I'd like to get... A pretty big jump, so let's call it eight thousand ringgit, right? Okay. Statistically, it's quite jump. That's a what thirty three percent increase. It's quite big. That's already switching jobs almost. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. So um, I don't know what role to pick. Any uh, role, lah. Any role. Actually, okay. for me, I think can be my my okay. formula somewhat can be applied. So I think the first question I ask is actually why do you want to get that jump? So the intention of that jump is important. Yeah. So if the person is like, oh, it's because I want to take care of my family. Yeah. It's because you know I have uh, certain responsibilities. I need I just to bought a house, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Then okay lah. I mean, oh, really? Yeah. Wow, okay. Then I will say also okay. So now your current skill set is this, this, this. Your responsibilities are this, 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 and your current daily checklist is this, this, this. So I'm like, what can you offer to the plate that justifies this two k? And then maybe we can somehow have a discussion on how to get you to 8K. So mm. perhaps there are things on my plate that I can share to you and you can adopt onto your plate so you can assist me with it. They can justify your pay. Or if let's say it's, a, it's both of us are more or less the same, right? Or if I'm earning just a little bit more and I go like, okay, let's see how we can scale the business and then we can apply the responsibilities to each other. Because I feel like if this person I want to work with and he has the capability to achieve what my goals are also because he's my employee, then I think the discussion is, is warranted, you can work together to reach that goal. But I think a lot of times when people ask for an increment, it's just for ego sake only. Mm. And then they don't, they, it's not just ego. I also feel like when you come in with that idea of, I want an increment, the question now also is, did you consider what the employer also wants or what the employer is expecting or what the employer is planning for in that specific business? So I think that question can also, it helps you. How do you sense it as an employer? Like they, they, what they just come in, uh, I want want increment or I want promotion. Very difficult because I think overall so far, right, based on my experience, uh, and I've only been working for like 10 years ish, right? It's a feel thing. Mm. It's a feel thing. Like like a tone of someone asking. It's a feel. It's also understanding like whether uh, that that person's past, that person's like resume or that person's uh, experience I've worked with before. And then if you, Sometimes I make mis- mistakes also. So like, like example, if the person told me, yeah, I just want to earn more because I want to take care of my family. But actually the guy don't want to take care of my family. He just want to spend on shit on you, right? Mm. Example lah. Mm. I made a mistake, man. I'm like, fuck, I guess I was wrong. But I also know that by doing this more often and making more mistakes, you, as an employer, you kind of learn one. You need to, you need to have that feeling. And you can be wrong also. You know, you can be like, I declined the increment. When you should promotion, have. And I should have done it. It's down like, fuck. But I yeah. have to find a way to rectify it as, as best as I can already. So if let's say, example, if I employee asks for increment, promotion and all that, and I'm like, maybe the, not ready yet. Then person says, okay lah, I will chow lah, it's okay. Then after that, I'm like, fuck, maybe I was wrong. Then after that, I'm like, maybe I go have a conversation again. Or maybe you wait. Yeah, I'll wait, it's okay. Because I know that in the, there's always going to be ups and downs anyway, right? So as an employer, you are going to face times of like high, you're like, wow, profit is great. You know, bonuses, a glow and shit. But there are going to be times where like, fuck, business is damn slow. Like, yeah. Fuck, how? Uh? 
So I, it's the same with also your internal uh, manpower. I yeah. feel like sometimes there are going to be highs, there are going to be lows, but it's your it's responsibility as a as a owner or an employer to keep that trajectory somewhat going upwards, law. Mm -hmm. So even if it's recognizing a mistake and you just go like, look, I fucked up. Actually, I think when you do that, arguably the person respects you more and they're like, it's okay. Don't worry, we all make mistakes also. Because I think it's more of a human business than my real business itself. Eventually when you're an employer already. It's very like, and humans is like, you can't see power scale also. Yeah. It's very yeah. difficult. Uh, a big yeah. I take a slightly different approach. Uh. Mm. Um, I evaluate them across the year. Okay. Oh, across the year, okay. Mm, across right. the year. Uh, regardless what they're doing. Uh, I mean, the, the function of them in the business, whether they are sales, technical, or mm. somewhere in between just doing administrative stuff. Mm. Um, again, it's very hard to quantify, um, like say administrative things, but the two things that that um, the fundamentals of a business is probably the sales and the technicals, right? I have to overlook both sides throughout the year. So I engage... Um, I split my time equally between the two sides. Uh. And if they come and ask me, uh, and it has happened, <laughs> quite <laughs> recent, uh, the thing is, I always am ahead before they... Mm, got something in chin. Sure. Okay. Um, I always try to be one up over before I anticipate, I, I anticipate these things. Uh. When oh, I, I see right. somebody is uh, not too happy, blah, 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 I go and... You go to them I, first. I confront the situation. I, see, I mean, I not see. aggressively, but I just confront. <laughs> the, I just confront the situation, la, Like you okay? Uh. Because everybody got ups and downs. Even yeah. I got my downtime, yeah, Let's yeah, be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And then my partners will like chill me mm. and all that kind of stuff. But specifically, when it comes to uh, uh, money bracket, right? I don't entertain stuff when it comes to your personal life. Ah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Because. We all have been in that situation, not just me. First job, not enough money, figure out. If you really think the second job can pay you better and can fit your, your wants, oh, yeah. go for it. Yeah. Because, but you don't put that um, um, issue onto the business. Mm. For me, that's that. Lah. But at the same time, I always want to reward people for what they do. Um, I don't look at PNLs to pay you what I think you deserve. I think you deserve what uh, for for your output throughout the year. So if technically you are good throughout the year, I am not going to sort of look at say business suddenly like extra two hundred percent over last year. I am not going to give you like a massive bonus. I will give you ten percent raise. Yeah. For example, uh, market rate people give you three to five percent. I give you ten. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you have performed well, and I think you deserve ten percent more than uh, what you were earning last year. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's that lah. So your personal life does not equate to how I'm gonna reward you. If you really want, you you please jump. Oh. Mm. So Justin, um, so yeah. Uh, you, you have a unique uh situation where you are both salaried and you've done freelancing as well. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I guess on your side, which is the flip side, like how do you approach uh salary negotiations is going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> but and, and also, also, wait, wait, also, like, how do you charge your rates for uh, freelancing? Freelancing, Because I'm sure people will come back and say, no, nah, we want it like 50% mm. cheaper or whatever. So we start with the salary one first. Mm. I think that one, going back on the earlier one, I think I agree with him a bit more in the sense that because you were saying the, um, if the guy comes to you and says, uh, oh, my life is tough. Uh. So I need work. But the thing is that's personal, right? Yeah. Like a lot of people, it, it's whatever work he puts in, there's another employee that does the same amount of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's a bit lucky, that not as tough a life, but he's put the same, the same amount of work. So why does this guy get yeah. the, you know, just because he has a sad story? Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So that one is a bit unfair for the other guy. Yeah. Mm. Then you will demoralize that. The, the unless you keep it a secret, right? la, ask him to Un post on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anyways. Yeah, it's that kind of thing. Like, it's like, it's like um, so I don't think the story should, but if you want to personally help him, it's fine like, on the side. Or mm. But it doesn't have to be that way, about, right? Yeah. Because the moment the other guy finds out or the other people find out, that whole situation is going to be... Yeah, wrong. yeah. That's true. That's true. It's a domino yeah. effect. Mm. So then, because you have to think of a company as a whole, right? Yeah. Not just, oh, that one guy. That individual. Hell, yeah. you know? So at the end of the day, it's like, okay, 
can I afford to do this? Unless it's very specialized. Mm. Like he's got one special role, yeah, fine. Yeah, you know, maybe I mm. can I can find some value in that and how you appreciate that. Yeah. So if you don't, then you know you may cause yeah. ripple effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. We've seen uh, that kind of mm. thing before. So, yeah. you know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. then because it becomes very toxic and appreci that appreciation feels very different, right? Yeah. So at the end, they, uh, it causes more problems uh, because especially if you've got a good working team. Uh, yeah. Just because of this, you can help him on the side. Uh. Yeah. There's no problem. Doesn't like, need to be yeah. linked to the. Because the moment, you know, especially some companies where it's very, uh, the culture of, of, you know, I would say, very political and things yeah. like that, right? There. It's, it's risky uh, as, yeah. as, um, you know. As, uh, and then the other one you're saying, uh, how do. No, no, but before that, like, yeah. how do you go about asking for, like, if you were to go in wanting more money, what's your game plan? Usually, I mean, I, I assume you've asked for race before, right? Not not necessarily. Yeah, company. kind or you of. Kind of just kind wait of. for. You know, because that's the thing. Uh, I look at the, uh, you look at your own value as well. Yeah. Okay, because uh, lucky is you get to do freelance and you get to do the thing, so you get to know your hourly rate, right? Mm -hmm. Roughly la. And from there, you kind of go like, okay, I'm spending this much time at this place, because that's how you do freelance work normally. For me, it's like you basically Comparing, you, you you you. You ask yourself, like, how much would you want to be paid to even do something? If not, I could be doing something else, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe relaxing or whatever it is, right? So how much is your time worth at your current valuation or what you feel that is fair? Then from there, you can easily build up like, yeah. how much is this? Okay, this is a three-hour job. This is how much, right? So, But when you go to a company, you also must realize that it is a discount. Because at the end of the day, you are taking your whole day. Mm -hmm. So you might have other opportunities that might come out, mm -hmm. but you know, I've and said- secure lah. Yeah. 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 And the security, yeah. yeah. So I guess that is the thing you kind of have to weigh. Yeah. And also you have to read the client. Yeah, Sometimes, yeah. You know, some clients you kind of go like, mm, maybe I can just mm -hmm. push it a bit more because you know, sometimes yeah. you know, it's like really big companies or something mm -hmm. like that. You kind of mm -hmm. go like, okay. But sometimes also you have to do favors. Yeah. It's not one way. It's not. Yeah. So if, 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 let's say for simplicity, your hourly rate at your salary job is 100 ringgit. Yeah, for right? example. What, what's a fair amount or reasonable range to charge for freelancing, which is presumably higher, right? It should be higher. But at the same time, you look at the job. Uh, yeah. Because even though if your hourly rate is high, how much do you want the job? Number one. And number two, how much is that thing worth? Maybe, okay, you say, okay, my hourly rate is 100. But the thing you can only sell for 50 ringgit, like, like yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense to charge that much. So sometimes you think like, okay, if it's simple and you, you tell the client ahead, uh, say, uh, it's going to be a quite simple thing. I'll charge you only this much. Because I know you can't make much profit if I charge you. You get into the good books in some way mm -hmm. or something. Right? Yeah. So it? at the end, then you kind of have to... Play by ear lah. You kind of mm -hmm. go like look at look at the client and see how what's the affordability and whether you want to do it. Like. If not, if you feel it's really not worth doing, then you should really just say no, rather than right. push yourself through it and then it's hell for you and then you don't get paid much. Yeah, man. Then, yeah, yeah. So you really have to balance that. I think that's the tough part, and that comes only with after doing <laughs> a, yeah. a wide amount. Like, you kind of go like, oh, and then like each, each, each industry or so yeah. is a bit varies, mm -hmm. different. Then you have to see the personality of the person you're working with as well. Mm -hmm. Someone more, someone less, some more chin chai. You have to look at the economic situation as well, uh, yeah. Because sometimes you might be used to charging that X certain amount, right? The mochi mm -hmm. auntie, right? Then she realized that like, you can't even buy the ingredients. Then that's a problem, uh. Yeah. No production, no mochi at all. <laughs> mm, fair enough. But I think the difficulty with freelancing also is like, I don't know why. Like, don't you feel like when you stop or you decline a job and then suddenly it just stops flowing in? Is it just me? Yeah, some, sometimes it's like that. Right? Because then you, sometimes you want a client to keep like a retainer kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unsaid you. retainer, that type of thing. But the problem <clears throat> is you have to do a lot of shit jobs. Ah. Yeah. Right, so... Sometimes even like it's a, I won't say charitable cause, but you know, it's kind of like <laughs> that kind of thing. I think I just kind of go like, if it's easy, okay, sure. Mm. Like, but uh, long run, see what you want to do. Uh, if you really want to, 
go on this and live on a um, you know pure uh, freelance basis yeah. or you want to do a part time thing or whatever it is it's, it's tough lah like, but you really have to weigh in and you also have to be very honest with yourself like why am I worth yeah like how good is my skill or how good is, what can I do if if I'm going to tell myself oh I'm the best of course <laughs> <laughs> you can't <laughs> crazy no one's going to come yeah. and, and you know unless yeah. you've proven yourself or something like that. Mm. I, I I think for my myself, if I can share with people how they will go about increasing salary pay or freelancing is two things. Uh, the first is, uh, and I mentioned this in the previous podcast, uh, it, it boils down to really two things. When you talk to your employer, you can explain in as many sentences as you want why you should mm. get this and all that, that. But the two key thing is, you have, to tell, you have to give your employer the clear message that I'm here to either A, make more money for you or B, save you more money slash time slash effort. Uh. Once all your points can be distilled into those two, right, you will always be in the conversation. I've never heard of one employer that, that says, right, if the employee comes in, say, hey, I want to make you more money, they'll be like, nah, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm busy. Right. Next, next, we talk next. I think God, la, but yeah. God, la, because you know, it's like they're firm in that way. No, no, no. Yeah. I said, you, you, I mean, not not as a salary negotiation. It's more like you come in saying, I think we can make more money. Oh. They'll be all ears, they'll be like, uh, they'll be talking to the president. Oh, wait, chill. Sorry, Mr. President. Put it down <laughs> though. And then they'll be said, you know. Um, so you, you start off there and then you're already in the conversation. Now, if, if that is the conversation starter on your side, what does it mean? It means that you have to align your skills or yeah, knowledge based on that. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, I think a lot of companies um, have bans, right? Pay bans and all that. And that can be a limiting factor because you can say, well, I'm very good and the HR or whoever can agree. Mm. But if they say, oh, sorry, but if we do this, we have to do it for everyone else. Then it's going to be, it, it doesn't matter. It's structural. You can't change it. Yeah. Here I would say that um, you want to be, first be the best in that band. And more importantly, you want to create a band for yourself, right? If someone says, oh, you are this designation and therefore we cannot pay you more than that. But you say, look, my skill set, what I've done for the company right, is way beyond this. I should not be lumped in together with this band. I should be a completely separate band. Then I think you, you want a situation where the company creates a role or a band thanks to you. Because if you are operating in the, within the band, right? What you're actually doing is that you're ceding the, the initiative to the company to say, well, there's this band, we create this. It's like nature that you can't mess with nature, <laughs> right? So yeah, you're great, but this is nature. You want to be in a way, super nature, right? You want to say, no, 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 like none. Yes, I, I, I do do some this, but I also do this and do this and do that. So you want to almost like confuse the employer, like we actually, He's doing more than that. And I think if I get this wrong, I'm going to lose this something very special. Oh, like creating a, what's that called? Like yeah. FOMO, like yes. FOMO feel. So this is like the more conceptual part of the salary negotiation. Then the more concrete one is, if you truly have that ability, right? If you're truly that good, right? Even if you're not looking for a job, always be out there talking to your company's competitors or adjacent industries. You always want to get a quote for you. Mm -hmm. the best case scenario is if you continuously be valuable, then you're always asking a salary quote from various different yeah, companies. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly you get one very nice one, 50% increase. increase. Mm -hmm. You can take that and then you can throw back to your current ma ma management and then you can say, I really like working here, but what they've offered is very hard for me to turn down. Can you help me out? Mm. And then when they see 50%, Either they'll say, sorry, it's too high, at best you go, or if they really want to keep you, they will do they'll be like, yeah, your pay ban, I cannot increase more than 10%. But someone else is willing to give 50, why am I missing out? Uh? Mm. Maybe I should change something. Ultimately, it moves yeah. everybody in and the same. The beauty about this, you can ping pong many times. You can say, then it's okay, I give you 60%. So say, uh, okay, let me think, then show it, okay, let me think about it. And you, you want the paper. Uh. Mm -hmm. You go back to the company that offer you 50%. Right. And then you, you, okay, you don't abuse it, but you ping pong one to two times. That's why right, you, 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 you hear stories of normal people, right? Receiving two, 300% increases in pay. Then you're like, what do you do? And all that. This is some of the games that they play. La. And it's not like, you know, the corporation is 
you know, trying to be kind to you or anything. You might feel like, well, if I do this, I'm being unkind to the corporation. If the corporation care about you, it doesn't matter, right? Can I just add on something on that? Uh, on that, yeah. on that um, competitors offer, right? I've never faced the situation so far, but I feel, I mean, I, what, what I feel about it is that if somebody were to really give you, give that person, your, your employee, that grand offer, I don't think you should ever match it. I don't think because so Because psychologically, right, you are giving the person only because they have yeah, a leverage yeah, over yeah. you. So then, just oh. say, for example, you match it. And if they stay, status quo, right? They are comfortable with the culture and everything else. But then you, down the line, or during your down days, I mean, putting myself into uh, in, in the employee shoes, right? And then you start thinking about, oh, so this guy actually gave me the risk only because I had a leverage over him, you get what I mean? Mm. So it's it's not no appreciation. Uh, correct. It's, it's, yeah. You 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 did the boss did not anticipate this. He's just giving me merely because someone else. It's gonna make his life harder to replace me yeah, and yeah, teach yeah. him all that stuff. So yeah. I I feel like if there's a grand offer like this, they should just go. Mm. Mm. Personal personal view. Well, actually, people. I kind of feel that too. Yeah. I, I remember somebody told me about this also about how, and I said the same thing, yep. like you should ask that person for mm. that offer, then you come back and you show that. And I think it was Andrew who told me or something. Mm. Uh. He was like, industry very small. Uh. Mm. I tell you, mm. one like drinking session among mm. bosses. Gone. <laughs> I tell you, then everybody <laughs> just yeah. lowball you after that. It's kind mm. of like that. But I forgot who told me this. Mm. I think I was in advertising at the time when mm. I thought of this or so. I'm like, yeah. why can't I just ask for a salary and then ask yeah. for a match? Then I think my dad, uh, I forgot who, uh, somebody told me this right, or so. Right. Yeah, there are, I mean, I'm not saying you, you shouldn't do it. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's possible. Mm. But I remember that like, someone told me that the repercussions don't out, I, Yeah, outweigh. I don't think you should abuse it. For yeah. sure. Right? That's why if I had to put a number, just do it once, maximum. Mm. If you had to do it, just do it once. But that's why on the employer side, you also have to create, you, you have to assume that every talent that you have, right, someone else can outbid you. Yep. That is my assumption always. Mm. Yep. So that's why you have to give a lot of non-financial benefits. Mm. So oh, that, that's true. That's if you are dealing with an employer, right? So on the employer side, you know this is something that mm. the employee can do. Mm. That's why you have to prepare very early on to give a lot of non-financial benefits. Right. For example, you give the fellow four day work from home. Yeah. <laughs> so then Damn. the argument is no more. Damn. Then, they, then they, say, they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. He offered you 30% high, but is he going to give you mm. four day work yeah. week? Yeah. Ah, then straight away, right? The employee now is like, eh? Yeah, but a lot of employee employers, they don't think like that. And I think this ping pong thing, right, works a lot better in a big- Big company. Yes. Company. Yes. Where it's this uh, monolithic yep. corporation yep. that works. I think in SME- Very hard. It's a bit harder. And of course with SME, because you're generally closer to the person, so there's a lot of non-financial mm. benefits you can do. And in any case, as an employer, I think it's a lot better to give non-financial benefits beyond financial. It's like flexibility. But I also think- Flexibility, yeah. influence. Mm. You know. But I also think Malaysians, especially in the SME space, they should speak to their boss more. I think and so too. anticipate, like, you know, end of the year or whenever they're closing their books before they start budgeting for the next year, that's the perfect time for you yeah. to go and ask a raise. Not sometime in February when you want to change your phone or like, oh, yeah, man, you know, yeah. you want to upgrade your internet, la, all this kind of nonsense, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think that's true, but I also think bosses need to be yes, create the environment. Yes. Mm. Of where it's easy. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, mm. I think it's also up to owners of boss to go talk to people. Uh. You know, or, like, like I said before this, right? I feel like every every yeah. industry is an industry until you become higher management, then it becomes a people industry. But asking too much from boomers. Yeah. I think we need to boomers, set like, extra 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 yeah, yeah, I think it's extra, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think as an employer, you should yeah. you should just create the environment. Mm. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. But you should be creating a good vibe mm. environment anyways. Yeah. It's true. Okay, I think that's a very interesting conversation. But as usual, we want to leave uh, we want to leave our listeners uh, with mm-hmm. one thing more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the trick. Yeah, but we're already at 48 minutes. We already passed already. Yeah. It's supposed to be at 45, yeah. yeah. Okay, we're close. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you love us a lot, can can do Patreon. It would be nice. But you know what I realized, bro? I didn't put the Patreon links this whole time, bro. Oh, I just copy-paste right. the timestamps. But this, I will, I will repaste the Patreon links for before this. Yeah. Okay. See you guys next time. Right. Bye. Peace.